डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फिजिक्स आरजे कॉलेज एज वेल एज आई ए पी टी मुंबई सब रिजनल काउंसिल एंड आई एम वेरी हैप्पी दैट वी हैव अ रिसोर्स पर्सन हु हैज एक्चुअली टेकन इनिशिएटिव इन स्टार्टिंग दिस पर्टिक्युलर लेक्चर सीरीज लास्ट वीक ओनली विजय सिंह सर सेट दैट लेट अस स्टार्ट समथिंग ड्यूरिंग दिस लॉकडाउन पीरियड सिंस वी आर नॉट एबल टू डू एनीथिंग आउटसाइड and we immediately thought and he accepted that i will deliver a first lecture so thank you very much sir actually on behalf of uh, all of us that uh, you have accepted uh, to deliver this lecture uh, coming back to his uh, little bit introduction uh, he has uh, dr vijay singh completed his doctoral degree from the state university of new york in 1978 he was a professor of physics uh, at uh, iit kanpur for over 20 years that is from 1984 to 2004 and professor of physics at uh, homi bhava center for science education which is a center for tifr mumbai from 2005 to 2015 as well as he was a adjunct professor at center for excellence in basic sciences mumbai and iit bombay he is a fellow of national academy of sciences visiting professor at cebs and currently the president of indian association of physics teachers he was the national coordinator of science olympiads a national uh, initiative for undergraduate science for about 10 years under his mentorship large number of high school students and uh, have won gold medals at international olympiads also large number of undergraduate students have completed and carried out their projects resulting in several international publications professor vijay singh has worked as visiting faculty at universities in united states of america he has over 150 peer reviewed international scientific publications he is a co-author of ncert physics textbooks for high secondary physics and he was also a chief editor for indian association of physics teachers bulletin which is published every month and one of his hobbies is to solve and design problems at school and undergraduate level physics i think that is a very unique hobby and i can go on but let us uh, have uh, dr vijay singh for the today's session i welcome you again sir for this session and over to you i think our devi prasad shetty will help you out if uh, his uh, Uh, with your uh, technical assistance and you please uh, start your lecture thank you once again and sorry okay. for the delay yes thank you rekha madam huh. uh, should i begin yes sir yes sir, sir please okay okay a very good afternoon to all of you and good i would like to begin by thanking uh, thank you uh, uh, and i would like to thank uh, rekha and junjunwala college for coming forward to share this uh, experience with us okay i am not i am not a very uh, savvy with modern technology so i will do my best i will try to speak slowly and uh, deliberately okay and i have spoke and the ch- topic i have chosen is uh, essentially something which is a very popular topic so i thought to begin with we should go easy on the students or on the participants and they might be encouraged to participate and to attend even the other much better talks than this present one so let me begin the topic that i have chosen uh, where is it i have to share the screen uh, somehow I'm, i have to go to the application window i know that uh, the topic that i have chosen is right here it's called physics and the city of mumbai uh as someone and before i start am i clearly audible devi prasad ji yes sir okay uh, and the, is the screen visible clearly yeah screen yes yes sir. yes sir yes absolutely thank you so now i can begin uh yes. once again it is physics and the city of mumbai as uh, someone who has lived and spent quite some time in what was once bombay and what is now mumbai okay it is natural uh, and so is many of you many of you have also uh, been in uh, a bombay bombayite if i might say or mumbai kar uh, it is natural to have a certain attachment and to have a certain perspective on the city so just as a poet would write poetry about the city or someone who writes novels would write a short story about mumbai uh 
as a physicist, we look at the physics of Mumbai. Okay, uh, some hundred years ago, a poet had come from Lucknow. So since I spoke about poetry, I'll talk about what this poet did. He had come from Lucknow, and uh, he went on top of Malabar Hill and saw the crescent, what is called the Queen's Necklace now, uh, which is Chaupati Beach, and he was very thrilled. Then he went to Warli, to Haji Ali, and he saw the uh, crimson sunset, which I will now show you. And he Haji. wrote a poem, a short story about it. Okay. Kya is, this is Haji. Yes. No, no, I don't have it. I don't have it. I don't have it. नहीं मेरे समझ नहीं बात Sir, please continue. Hello, Vijay sir. Sir, को mute के हो गए क्या? डीपी मैम सर को अनम्यूट करना पड़ेगा हेलो हाँ जस्ट अनम्यूट रेखा उनको फोन मैसेज कर नहीं तो फोन डाल कि सर आप अनम्यूट कीजिए अपने आप को करके इज नॉट अलाउिंग मी विजय सिंह आई एम अनम्यूटेड माय सेल्फ ओके ओके सर नाउ कैन यू सी द स्क्रीन वी कैन हियर सर Can you see my slide? Yes, yes sir. Please. Yes, please. Okay, any one person should speak. Maybe Devi Prasad ji, so that would help me. Okay, so yeah. that is what this poet exclaimed. And when you look at this Haji Ali picture, uh, what attracts you is the presence of this minaret. Okay, and you ask yourself this question: Why is there a minaret out on the sea? Okay, so a minaret is actually it acts as a lighthouse. Uh, a minara in arabic means a lighthouse or a signaling tower at sea okay so it is used as a signaling tower or a lighthouse so that ships from far can see you can see that there is some land close by and then they can get heart from this uh, from the fact that they have been out on the sea for such a long time so now they have come to the shore okay and why do you have a tall structure that is because uh, well if uh, i can quote another uh, indian right uh, indian mathematician aryabhat bhugol sarvatto vritt that is the earth is round that is why you have that minaret that is the simple reason it is what they call as the horizon problem okay as you go higher up it is the further that you can see so let us uh, as a beginning thing before we go into something heavier than this let us look at how that happens what happens is you use pythagoras theorem you just focus on this the earth is round you are up on a minaret of height h so r plus h the whole square is equal to x square plus r square where x is the distance to the horizon okay and if you do that and you simply ignore one term in this which is h square because h is 80 some 10 or 50 meters while r is some 6400 kilometers you get this expression x is equal to square root of 2 2rh okay now you take this expression r is 6400 kilometers h is some 25 meters if you are on haji ali it's actually 25 meters and you work out <coughs> excuse me and you see 
that you can see approximately 18 meters away, 18 kilometers, sorry, as far as 18 kilometers away. So this is the kind of question every kid asks his parents, his father or his mother. No, why is the horizon round? Why do we need a tall structure to see far? And the simple answer is this. This might look to most of us as something very simple, but it has buried in it a lot of very interesting physics principles. So let me recount that for you. One, okay, one, you ignore h square in terms of 2rh. Okay, so that is to how to make an approximation. You teach the kid that. Two, okay, you teach the kid something called working with mixed units. R is usually in kilometers. The radius of the earth R is 6,400 kilometers. H is usually in meters. It's like 25 meters. You can see it here in the calculation. So how to convert units? Three, you come across a scaling law. The scaling law tells you that you need not calculate square root into 2R all the time. You do it once and for all. 2 into R is 2 into 6,400 kilometers which is 12,800 kilometers, then you do it once and for all and put it aside. So every time you come across a new H, you just do the square root of H. So the third is a scaling argument, an approximation of H square, number two, working with mixed units, and three, a scaling law, square root of H. And the fourth and the most important is the experimental one. Can you really see this far? And the simple answer is no, particularly if there is pollution then certainly you can't even see five kilometers ahead. Okay, so the, what you have to actually decide then is can you actually see this? Okay, what is the experimental or observational test for this? Is that clear? So this is what I would say as a beginning and an opening line for the city is, uh, would be my uh, use of the Haji, Haji Ali Minaret and Pythagoras theorem or the Silver Sutra, as it is called. So before we continue, we are still on the introductory part of Mumbai. Okay, let me make a brief comparison between Mumbai and England. Okay, here is the comparison. The history of Mumbai. In 1661, or before that, it, Mumbai was with the Portuguese. The Portuguese princess Catherine Braganza uh, was married to the King of England, King Charles II. And as part of the dowry, and even they had the dowry system, it's not only we who can be accused of this. He, she took Bombay as a dowry gift to England. That is 1661. So we were being traded from one European country to another. Okay. And what was happening in, in the world is that around the same time, Robert Boyle proposed his Boyle's law for ideal gases. Pressure is inversely proportional to the volume if temperature is constant. In 1668-69, British East India Company leased, or they took the East India Company is the biggest and most rapacious multinational company ever in the history of mankind. They took Bombay or Mumbai from King Charles II on a lease. Okay. Around that time, while we were being traded once again, uh, the philosophical transactions of the Royal Society, the first peer-reviewed journal came out in England. 1687, the British East India Company transferred its headquarters from Surat to Mumbai, making it head of all the company's holdings. What was happening in England at that time? Newton brought forth his great publication, The Principia, which had the laws of motion, the law of universal gravitation, and is actually the basis for all of classical physics. Let us go further ahead. 1802, a very important treaty was signed between the Marathas and the British East India Company, in which it's called the Treaty of Basin or Vasai, uh, in which essentially the Marathas decide, gave up a lot of their rights, and certainly the rights to Mumbai or any other place to the British. Okay, that was the final nail in the coffin of uh, Mumbai. And around the same time, Thomas Young uh, basically uh, put forward the wave nature of light. 
So this is the way the world has continued. The comparison is stark. Okay, while we were being while we were being ground under the heels of colonialism, the world in Europe was making great strides. Okay, a little bit of the geography of Mumbai, with which we are probably familiar. The Mumbai consists of two places. I mean, basically, there is suburban Mumbai, the green zone. Okay, and then there is this island city of Mumbai. Okay, the population of Mumbai is about 18 million, and you know, I don't have to stress in this time of Corona, the population density is very high. It's upwards of 40,000 persons per square kilometer, which means that on an average, average I say, on an average, each person has five meters by five meters. to herself and that's the average you know mostly it is much less than that okay so the population density is very high the layout of mumbai is not unusual it is a layout for many cities across the world let me make another comparison now this is manhattan manhattan is also north south just like mumbai is okay it has long avenues north south and streets across it is any any city which has rectangular roads cutting at right angles to each other it's called the manhattan metric okay as opposed to that a city which fans out from a central point which goes out in all directions okay that is called a moscow metric why moscow because moscow fans out from a central point called the kremlin okay now what are we mumbai which i show on the left side is the manhattan metric approximately a manhattan metric okay here is the island city here is mahim where i was born you know where i spent a lot of time okay and this is goes north south the streets of the major major roads of mumbai are north south for example if you look at the lady jamshedji road it starts from mandra and it continues on and on all the way to kolaba perhaps under different names you know if you look at mohammad ali road the mohammad ali road continues straight all the way down to mankhud on the way at for some stretches it's called the ambedkar road and then it's called the vn pura road you look at the tulsi pipe road what is called the senapati bapat marg it starts from mahalakshmi it goes all the way up to mayam it does get interrupted because of the creek mayam creek but then it continues again and used to be called now of course sb road but it was called golbandar road okay so we are in the manhattan metric there are very few east i would say east west uh, connections one is over tilak bridge for example delhi on the other hand fans out from connaught place so it has called it's called the moscow metric okay so the first thing you ask yourself is what kind of a metric does this city have and what what imposes that metric on it and and for as far as mumbai is concerned it is the, basically the sea on both sides which imposes this north south metric or the manhattan metric okay all right so much for the introduction uh and let me once more pause to ask am i clearly audible yes Hello. yes yes sir Yes. Uh, and this, what I'm uh, is this uh, visible? The screen? Yes. Yes. Perfectly okay. Thank you very much, yeah. Rekha. Yeah. Okay. And I can also be seen. Is that right? Yes. Yes. And you are audible, clear. Not very well. Okay. Thank you. So now, if you are living in Mumbai for a decade or even more, there are some pivotal pivotal experiences we all have. Okay. So let us go over what, as a Mumbaiker, uh, we always see. or we experience all the time okay one of the experiences is the mumbai trains okay not running anymore so it's no more a topic of perennial conversation whether the train is late the train is not late you know and you know how many people i mean you know basically board the train how many people are light so which is the busiest section so the mumbai trains is one of them we always it's a landmark of mumbai uh perhaps uh, when the co uh, this covid 19 crisis go though uh, blows over it, they will come back to their own okay the first train a little bit of history okay just a little bit before we do a couple of physics with it 
the first train was from CST, uh, Victoria Terminus in those days, to Thane. That was a long time ago, 1853. It went 34, 34 kilometers. It was a steam engine. It halted at a few places, basically Baikal and, La and Sion. And it took exactly one hour and 15 minutes for the journey. Okay. The fast train today, I, maybe a, takes about 45 minutes and four halls. And the slow train takes one hour, 15 minutes less than what our earliest train in 1853 did. Okay. So that's, uh, if you would like to call that progress, the progress is, I would say, one minute for every 10 years. We have cut down uh, the timing from one hour, one hour, 15 minutes to one hour. Okay. Uh, there is something about trains, which I have to tell you also. Okay, there is just the history of trains and how slow our progress has been. Okay, the speed of a fast train is approximately 90 kilometers per hour. That, as, we, as physicists know, is 25 meters per second. We like to work in SI units, and therefore we say how many 36 kilometers per hour is 10 meters per second and we translate it to 25 meters per second. Now, you ask yourself the following question. Supposing you're on the railway track, okay, and there's a fast train coming, and for some reason, you are incapacitated. You fall down, you cannot get up because you have broken your knee bone or something. Uh, the question is, uh, would you be saved, okay, would the train driver be able to stop the train in 100 meters? The answer is no, okay? Try 200 meters, try 300 meters, 400 meters, and even half a kilometer. Uh, which one of these uh, would be a safe distance to fall, you would ask? That is the kind of question I'm asking you. I'll pause for, say, 10 seconds so that you can think of an answer, okay? Out of these, 100 to 500 in units of 100 meters, which one would be a safe distance? The answer to this is none of them. None of these, because the maximum deacceleration of the train can be only half a meter per second square. This is an important number, and you plug it into a very important formula that you learn in ninth standard, okay? V is the final velocity, which is zero. U is the initial velocity, which is 25 meters per second. You stick a half into the two and you get one. And therefore you get S is equal to 25 square. And that is 625 meters, more than half a kilometer. So half a kilometer is not sufficient. And you have not even considered the reaction time of the driver, the time it takes for her to see you and then step on the brakes or to apply the brakes. That would be another two seconds and that would be another 50 meters gone and that would be 675 meters. So never ever cross the railway tracks. I am told that even now about 10 people die on the tracks every day when the trains are running. I don't know how many get injured, but at least there are 10 fatalities almost every day. So let me continue with another theme. And this theme has to do with, uh, has to do with Bernoulli's principle. Can you stand near the tracks? It is not safe. And the answer to that comes from the fact, from the same, for the same reason that planes fly. That is because when planes fly, the wings are so shaped, and they're so aerodynamically shaped that the velocity below uh, is higher than the velocity above, okay? I'm sorry, it's the other way around. The velocity above is greater than the velocity below. So if when the velocity is high, okay, the pressure is low, okay? So, and with the, so above, uh, the pressure is low, below the pressure is high and the plane goes up, okay? A simple way to understand it also is to say that when a movie hall ends, again, once again, there's no movie halls anymore, during the corona crisis, 
when the movie all ends, everybody rushes for the outside. And at the door, there is a higher pressure, there is a smaller velocity. As soon as you edge past the door, you are again open, there is low pressure, high velocity. Okay, So that is one reason you are advised not to try stand before or close to the railway tracks. This is a no-no. You should never do this. Okay, Because when the train flies by at high speed, there is a small it drags the air with it. Very much like if you're going on the Bombay Pune highway, okay? Then on that highway, if you're in a small car and a big truck passes you by, you feel a lateral pressure towards that truck. Similarly, you will feel a small perceptible pressure towards the railway track. Okay? And this could prove to be uh, a dangerous thing for you. Okay? So never do this. The third thing you never do in a railway, uh, uh, for as far as uh, the railway trainers or the local trainers concerned, is the following. Okay, let me show it to you. And the principle of here we apply the principle of angular momentum conservation. Okay, it was Bernoulli's principle earlier. It was kinematics. Now look at this. This is August 18 to 2018, 7:18 p.m. at Thane Station. Hamid Jival's fatal deboarding from a local train. The train was streaming in this way. Okay. Hamid Jawal tried to jump off that train while before it had stopped. It was not moving fast. It was moving slow. But he tried to deboard while it was moving in the opposite direction to the motion of the train. And as soon as he landed, right. He fell onto the platform and he injured his skull. There was blood and he was no more. This was reported in the newspaper with the statement saying that we don't know who this person is. It was two days later that it was found that Hamid Jawal had come from Bangladesh. He was far, far away from his country, from his parents, from his family when this tragedy happened. Okay. Deboarding a local train while it is moving is also fatal. Okay. How do I explain it to a student? What I will say is the following. You are alighting from a moving train. Do not look at this picture. Look at this picture. Okay. The train is moving at a speed of two meters per second. Okay. It is moving with two meters per second. So it is basically the train is moving like this, say, say to the left. You are alighting. When you jump off the train, you have an angular moment, momentum. That angular momentum is mass into velocity, which is the momentum. It is the same thing in this direction because this train is moving at the speed v. So you carry the speed of that train. You carry the momentum of the train. So your speed is m into v. And the angular momentum is the distance from the platform to half your height. L is your height, say you're two meters. You're a tall person. So you get MVL by two, okay? When your feet hits the ground and it's right here, okay? And it hits the ground, it is, you're no more moving. You're not moving translationally. You will now rotate about this point. It is like coming like this. You start rotating. And for that, you use I into omega as the angular momentum. I've written W, read that as omega. The moment of inertia I is ML squared by three. That's the moment of inertia of any rod about an edge point, not about the central point, but about an edge point. Now you put two and two together. You equate this angular momentum to this angular momentum. The mass would cancel out. It doesn't matter how heavy you are. If you're a heavy person or a light person, it doesn't matter. The L cancels out and you get omega is equal to 3 by 2 V by 2 L. One of the L's cancel out. <coughs> okay. So V is about 2 meters per second. It's a slowly moving train. So you are under the fake impression or the false impression that I'm safe. It is just 2 meters per second. So 2 and 2 cancels out. L is 2 meters. So 3 by 2 is about 1.5 radians per second. A radian is about 60 degrees, so it is 90 degrees per second. Imagine what that means. 
this means that you fall down in 90 degrees you fall 90 degrees in just one second so you cannot save yourself and neither is a bystander who's looking at this tragedy intervene to help you out okay so we could go on and on we could continue with the strain physics and it is quite fascinating i can tell you but uh, let me change shift gears okay and talk about something else so we did kinematics okay and we did uh, how should i say bernoulli's principle and then we did angular momentum conservation mechanics so let's go ahead okay let's go to something else the bombay trains uh, rains for example this is the bombay rains what you see in front of you is a scene this is scene is from july 26th 2005 okay the scene it basically tells you that there was a huge flood you can see these floods it's actually quite uh, how should i say terrifying to see this lots of people walking okay. we have all experienced the bombay rains okay who has not every monsoon in spite of our precautions there is that one day we forget to take our umbrella it's a clear day and we get wet we all get wet okay also we all manage to lose one or two umbrellas uh, per monsoon season so we know the monsoon it's, it's about to come it should have arrived by now but this is how the 2006 tragedy played out at least in a small in a small i should say a small uh, uh, side in a side show but an important uh, a very tragic event happened we were told that during these rains the cars were underneath water half covered with water and the people inside were not able to open the door okay they were not able to open the door i wondered at that time if this is true until i actually did an experiment of this type i was not convinced that they could not push the door open okay so you see look at this door the door is half under underneath water and each door for example which is underneath water let us say it is 1 square meter and what you do is use a very old principle due to pascal for the average pressure exerted by the water on the car door okay the pressure exerted by a fluid like water is not always downwards it is exerted equally in all directions okay the pressure exerted on the door is given by the height of the door which is say 1 meter the g is the gravitational acceleration which is 10 so this is g h is 10 and rho the density of water is 1000 kilograms per meter cube that works out to 5000 pascal okay very high pressure okay this this kind of a pressure exerts a force on the door because pressure into area is the force the area of the door is 1 meter square and therefore the pressure is the force on the door by the water outside is 5000 newton how much you as a human being can exert it is not difficult to see how much can you lift you can lift at 20 kg you can lift 30 at the most 1000 kg which means 1000 into 10 is Uh, say a hundred kg, you can't lift a thousand kg. Hundred into ten is ten. So thousand newton is the maximum that you can give from inside. And from the outside, the water is relentless. It has got five thousand, five thousand newtons versus thousand newtons. So unless you can open the window, okay, which you could not because some of them worked on electronics and the electronics jammed because of the floods, you are trapped. so the reports that we heard that a few people died because they could not open the doors of their cars is probably true okay okay a third issue okay i have gone through it's been about half an hour so i have another 15 minutes 30 minutes 15 minutes at least till 5 o'clock okay look at the third issue what is the third issue we have a housing problem okay everybody 
and his brother is an expert on housing. Whether you are a pune or a professor or a panwala, everybody is an expert. You want to buy a house, you just have to say, or you want to sell your flat, even if you don't, a very interesting experiment you can do, you can just announce down, uh, outside that I want to sell it. And you have all kinds of people approaching you. This is Mumbai. That truth. This is Mumbai. These are basically what is called the slums or the Joparpattis of Mumbai. They go by different names in different countries. In Rio de Janeiro, which is also having a corona crisis, it is called favelas. Okay. In Azania, South Africa, oh, it is, they are called shanty towns. In US, uh, they are called ghettos, okay, where there is an uprising right now. And in England, it's called slums. In Bombay, it's called Zopatpati. Housing problem is very acute. How do we solve the housing problem? I have no answer. Okay, if I had an answer, I would apply that answer and make a lot of money. There's no answer, but I can understand the problem. So I will take you by a circuitous route to an understanding of this problem. Okay, here is the church of Mayim. Uh, I'm not sure if it is the Don Bosco church or the Mayim church, it's one or the other. Okay, and what you see on the side is basically the Don Bosco church is in King Circle, by the way, and the Mayim church, of course, we is in Mayim. Okay, uh, St. Michael's church. Uh, these large windows that you see, the function of these windows is very simple they let light in. They let nutrition in. If you didn't have the windows, this entire area would be quite dark and you would need electricity, a lot of electricity to actually light up this place. Okay. So basically what happens is that you have cells. You know, if there's a cell, the cell has to divide because as it grows bigger, the surface area goes as four pi r square, as r square. The volume goes as r cube. The nutrition comes from the surface, like this light, and to support that volume of R cube, the cell better divide, because the ratio of R squared to R cube, 4 pi R squared to 4 pi by 3 R cube, is 1 by R. When R becomes large, the cell becomes unviable. So there's a constant struggle to increase the surface area. You might say, what has that got to do with the housing problem? Bear with me, indulge me a few minutes, and I will explain it. Okay. Same thing. You see this modern malls. Again, these are closed nowadays. Okay. There is a big, this is called the atrium, by the way. Atrium means heart. What you see upstairs is a, basically a huge dome, which is lighted, which is not lighted, but it's transparent. So it lets light in. Since it lets light in, the people in the mall or the people who run the mall don't have to use too much electricity. Okay. Here is a small intestine. Okay, the small intestine is no long, is not small, it's 22 feet and it's all coiled. Why do we do that? Because it actually sucks in nutrition that the food we eat, it sucks in the nutrition from it. Okay. So it has to make it has to have a large surface area. To increase that surface area, it does something very interesting. On the inside, it has hair-like protrusions called villi. Okay, and these are all on the inside lining of these small intestines. That increases the surface area even more. In fact, the modern bath towel is inspired by these villi. Okay. They were the earlier one was simply a piece of cloth which would not dry you, but because of these small hair-like protrusions which the modern bath towel has, you no, know, you have better drying capacity after you take a bath. Lungs. Lungs are also in the news now because the lungs are getting filled with water if you are a corona patient. They have a large number of air sacs called alveoli. Why is that? To increase the surface area. Okay. Here's how you deal with increasing the surface area. What do you do? You go into the third dimension, as you can see here. Or you look here. This is a modern airport. How do you accommodate many planes? There's not no, too much surface area, but you think of villi. 
or these hair like protrusions in your small intestine and you have what are these called air jetties okay at this point let me pause for a minute and ask again uh, one of you am i clearly audible yes sir yeah 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 it's perfectly okay yeah and is this visible uh, yes your screen is also visible very okay. clearly thank you and, yeah yeah thank you sir yes okay Ah, so what you do here is the following. Here is a very innovative example in Dharavi. This is from Dharavi. Uh, if you want to dry papad, okay. If you did it on a flat surface, a flat surface, you could accommodate ten papads. But if you do it on a curved surface like this, you can accommodate twenty of them, because you are going essentially into the third dimension. So you go partly into the third dimension, and that is the idea where by which you solve. Uh, pressing problems such as the housing problem. How do you do that? Here it is. Look at the skyline of Mumbai. Okay, this glittering skyline. How have we solved the housing problem by just going into the third dimension and accommodating people into the third dimension? Okay, so this is neither one dimensional nor is it fully two dimensional or three dimensional or in two dimensional, three dimensional, but it's between two and three dimensions. This is called a fractal dimension. Look at the skyline of every country, which is an island, which has an island city like Beijing, or like Shanghai, or like Singapore, or like Tokyo. All of them have similar skylines where you go into the third dimension uh, to actually accommodate people. And that is not the only thing. Here is another another example: a double-decker BST bus. One deck is not sufficient. You go into the second dimension. I look at our local uh, long-distance trains. The third-class sleeper, okay, or what is called a second class or something, it's got three deckers: one, two, and three. And here is a typical scene. I don't recommend this. There is no place here, so we go into the third dimension. Not recommended. So you solve the problem by going to a higher dimension, but how much can you solve? Okay. Here is another example. There is a fruit. It's called. I think this might be the kadam, similar to the kadam fruit. You know, the kadam fruit. Uh, in case you uh, you have never seen it, or you must have heard at least, it was the. It is the kadam tree. Is the tree on which Lord Krishna used to sit as a boy and play the flute. So, it has hair-like protrusions, like the corona. And it has these protrusions to increase its surface area. So, the name of the game is increase the surface area, or you divide. Okay. Let me change gears again. Okay, I've talked about the Bombay trains. I've talked about the Bombay rains. I've talked about the Bombay housing crisis. And this is just a side topic. So let me talk about the ceiling. Okay. There is an interesting optical phenomena associated with the ceiling, okay. And that is, if you go on that ceiling from the north side, that is from the Bandra side, you will see that these double-stranded cable-stayed ceiling. This is this is called the cable-stayed ceiling, and there are two strands to it, two parallel strands to it. They will show a very interesting pattern of this type. There is one strand in front and one below, and therefore, sorry, it will show you these very interesting patterns. And these patterns keep shifting as you keep approaching those double strands, and then they disappear. So once more, as you go on the ceiling from the Bandra side, look up, look at these cables, and as you look at these cables. You will find these patterns which keep shifting. These are called moiré patterns, okay. because one strand is slightly shifted from the other strand. You get these patterns. Okay. Here is another example. You take this. In fact, you take a graph paper if you want. Take a graph paper. Okay. If you have something like this, that's even better. Take a transparency Xerox of it. And move one across the other. As you move one across the other, you'll get these interference patterns. These are actually 
space patterns these are actually more called more patterns very interesting patterns okay they are used to detect imperfections if you take one and move it slightly against the other you start seeing the pattern okay and uh, uh, there is a very interesting history about it the moire patterns were used in uh, i would say around 1890 to make story books where you could make jack you know like a lion run or something in that story book and uh, i'll show you an example here i don't know if it will be this is a uh, basically of uh, well let's see this you see this penguin here this penguin is here okay and here is the moire pattern on it on this one as i move it across you'll see the ball flipping across okay and you can purchase it at street corners uh, particularly at traffic signals for 25 rupees or even in second class compartments let me see when i show you another one here here is some dolphin dolphin moire pattern okay. sir will you please uh, switch on your video audio video what is it hello so hello. that uh, uh sir your slides are not moving uh, they are stuck on uh, uh, slide number 39 or 40 40 pe atak gaya hai video ha ah, abhi main bhi roka hu nahi nahi uh, you were talking something else uh, that let me show you but we didn't see it that's why i'm saying ha ah, now can you see 41. this 41 yes now, now it is seen like... yes yes ha ah. okay okay because i stopped at that point yeah okay So you were showing well, something probably on your video, but your video ah. is off. Oh, my video is off. Okay, ah, very interesting. Ah, it is off. Amazing. I didn't turn it off. I can't turn it on. And now is it on? So because you are sharing your slides, we can't see you. Oh, that's no, all. It is on. What okay. is on now? It is on. Can you see me? Ah, uh, now we can. I, we can see. Yeah, we can see you. Ah, okay. So what I was basically showing you is this uh, thing that you buy for twenty rupees at every uh, at many traffic signals in Mumbai from uh, uh, street vendors or urchins. So here is, can you see this dolphin? Yes or no? Yes. And then I put this pattern in front and I move it. You can see this dolphin moving up and down. Yes. Maybe yes. you can't see. Changing that. the pattern. Yeah, by just changing the pattern. and they were used in the 1890s to make before the what i would say the chal chitra came the silent movies these were used in story as full story books <coughs> to show how red riding hood is moving and then how red riding hood is being eaten by the wolf okay here is something that i have never succeeded in mumbai this is two high rises next to each other and this is the sunrise so i was trying to see if i can picture this or photograph this to get uh, uh interference or some kind of a diffraction pattern and it is not possible i found okay since we are on optics and interference i thought i should tell you this okay so let me change a little bit again change gears and talk about a great institution in mumbai now i think of a great institution scientific institution of mumbai okay and i will tell you about one of them bombay is associated with many great institutions and we look at one of them before we look at them uh, okay here is it it's the kolaba tree it was built in 1826 uh, it's the magnetic observatory which keeps a record of all the Uh, magnetic uh, of the magnetic uh, magnetic records and its fluctuations day after day month after month year after year it has faithfully kept this record i think since 1840 only place in the world which has an uninterrupted record of the magnetic field in the world even england and the greenwich laboratory or france they have an interrupted record interrupted by the first and second world war this is uninterrupted okay and there is a great hero associated with this uninterrupted record whom i'll tell you about 
let me backtrack and tell you about the trams and then i will come to the trams are relevant to the story okay the trams of mumbai okay this is a very old picture and i hope you can all see it these are trams drawn by horses it was around 1870 1880 okay all kinds of trams single compartment tram three compartment tram double decker tram you can see the double decker all kind of red tram white tram and all kinds of trams okay the great thing about trams is what i would call as the romantic era of trams okay the great thing about trams is that it is end point pollution is zero so it is not polluting there is level boarding look at this gentleman over here i remember when i was a small kid i could hop on and off the tram because it was low and it was a level boarding thing it's good for old people and children okay it moves slowly it goes into the heart of the city okay so small shops and businesses are assisted by the tram it as opposed to cars which you drive into malls okay any of you have been to dubai or something you have to drive no 20 kilometers to get to a mall or something like that you have to you have to drive to get to a mall trams go into the heart of this they would go right into kolaba market okay so i would call that the romantic era of trams and and talking about trams and i'm really sorry the trams the life of trams in mumbai ended around i think 1962 okay here is another thing to highlight this romance all the way there is an all india music conference uh, when was this january 27th to february 1st a long time ago this is 1942 or 1943 some of the date is not here but uh, it is somehow buried somewhere this is an in, in, invitation to attend trams uh, this uh, this music conference where some of the greatest singers sang from aladdi akhan to you name it you know i mean it was a and it says book early to avoid disappointment look at this red thing you know and trams available after every night performance so they said if you attend this this was, this was somewhere in the around uh, uh, rajabai clock tower or somewhere in uh, south bombay and after that they say trams are available i thought i should just share this very very old and very historic music conference that was held in india or in mumbai a long time ago you see the names which are associated with it people like onkarna thakur is right here aladia khan of course is here and all kinds of great singers in fact you know i i have to stretch my eyes but you can see them okay so i said the trams i bring out the romance of the trams but there is now the story i have to get back to the physics okay from the music okay the british introduced trams around 6473 1864 i mean and they were drawn by horses there was a proposal to electrify trams in 1900 but it was delayed till 1907 because there was an objection there was an objection and what were the objection the objection came from the kolaba observatory the objection came from the how should i put it the director of the kolaba observatory mr moose okay nana boy moose who said that i will not allow trams because there will be overhead cables okay not allow electrified trams horse cram trams are all right electrified trams are a no no because i have i'm doing this magnetic observation these currents the stopping and starting of trams yes paper at kya da yes okay Um, all right so they said that it will uh, disturb the magnetic field uh, measurement so you cannot do it until i allow you to do it and while he, they waited while the british waited for 7 years to introduce electrified trams what he did was he did suitable observations in alibag and in mumbai and in kolaba did a calibration study built an observatory in alibag and shifted his observations uh, observing instruments all to alibag okay there is some physics behind this trail but i let me not get into it except to tell you that when a current flows is that the high current like 20 ampere uh, a surge of current you know, you 
a 20 ampere current is not common but if there is a surge you get basically a, a change in about some 0. 0.0004 gauss which is which is which can disturb the recording the recordings went up to 0. 0.0001 gauss at that time okay Hence, the trans were not allowed in the Kolaba region until the observatory shifted to Alibag. Okay, and this is Kolaba. I will show you Alibag, which is right here, which was in the eye of the storm, Nisarg storm. Okay, and first you did the calibration studies, studies in both places, calibrated Alibag, yeah. and then you moved from Kolaba to Alibag. Uh -huh. Okay. And uh, uh, there's also another interesting history about every brick that was used to build the Alibag Observatory was tested for a magnetism. You see that it doesn't have any kind of magnetic signal. Okay. It was at that care that it was built. So as I said, the uh, associated with TRAM is this great Aliba, Kolaba Observatory. Associated with Kolaba Observatory, there's a great lesson where the director of an institute would stand up to the government. Not common at all these days. When there, I've seen directors of even big institutions uh, keeling over and bowing to the powers that be. Okay, This is the Magnetic Observatory at Alibag. So of course, before I leave uh, and go to the concluding part of my talk, five more minutes or three more minutes, I have to tell you, show you something else, and that's another great institution in Bombay, 1883, the Bombay Natural History Society. Okay. Sorry. From between 1911 and 1921, they did a great survey of species, mammalian species in India, and uh, I think they collected about 50,000 species and about 100 new one among them. Okay. It was a great exercise in what is called citizen science initiative. It's a voluntary body like the Indian Association of Physics Teachers, and they undertook that task a long time ago for mammalian species. Okay. Okay. So finally, you know, you can't stop. You can, if you have to discuss Bombay, you have to discuss Mumbai, you have to talk about Bollywood. Okay. And uh, we all know that many of the things that are shown in Bollywood are simply not allowed because it won't happen. Okay. The, the hero would die if he tried that trick, particularly, for example, where is, here is this one. The, tray, the car is moving in one direction, the hero is getting off in the other direction. Like Hamad Jawal, he would just crash his head and he would be dead in one second. Okay. Here is a guy who is walking, walk, walking vertically. Here is a person who is falling through a water, uh, how should I say, a waterfall. None of this is possible. A, a person casually crossing the tracks when the train is approaching at high speed. Okay. So we know this is not possible, so I'm not interested in it. Now, there are people who make a career out of this to show why this is not possible or why it is possible. There's a gentleman in Germany who does this for James Bond movies. Okay. What I'm interested in is in the romance part of it again, like the trams. Okay. Here is a great scene from Mughal Azam. It's called the Shish Bahal scene. A thousand, maybe 10,000 small mirrors were put up on the roof and on the sides by K. Asif, the director of Mughal Azam, okay, to create the scene to show Madhubala in each one of them as she danced. You know, she danced with this great uh, one liner called Parda Nahi Jab Koi Khuda Se Bando Se Parda Karna Kya. Then I cannot. When my love is not hidden from God, why should I care about you, Emperor Akbar? And then at that point, she's shown in all these thousands of these kaleidoscopes. It's, it's a kaleidoscopic effect. It is made with Belgian mirrors, but these Belgian mirrors are not made in Belgium. They were made in Ferozabad. And the set was made, in, I believe, in Mehboob studio in Bandra. You know, it's a great kaleidoscopic effect. There's another one I want to show you. There are at least five or six optic scenes that I have from movies which are just wonderful, Bollywood movies. But I can show you only one of them and explain the physics. Here is one from a movie called Bajirao Mastali. 
It's called the Aina Mahal scene. Bhaji Rao is standing here. Someone is explaining to him how this is happening. There is a mirror. There is a reflection from that mirror onto another mirror, which is in water. And that is reflected onto a screen. How do I produce this effect? Not difficult. This is not a difficult effect to produce. You have an object, say Bhaji Rao. You have a concave mirror. You get a reflection onto a plane mirror if you want. In her case, there was another concave mirror here, and that plane mirror then projects onto a screen. Okay. And I would suggest to all of you that if you're interested, you can actually show it. I mean, I have something, but uh, I cannot show it now because of this uh, uh, mode of operation. I normally try to show how this is possible. Okay. So with this, uh, uh, I think I will end. There's one more final scene. You know, there is a Panipuri scene from a movie. And the question is, how much water is there in this Panipuri? So we actually bought some 50 Panipuris from different sources, measured. And of course, ate those Panipuris, 15, 15 cc. So if you take six of them, you put nice water in it. You put some, uh, how should I say, pudina, etc. It's a good remedy, oral rehydration therapy. ORT as it is called Bombay style, take six Pani Puris. Okay. And with that, I will end. And thanks to you for listening to this. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Any questions, participants, now, please? Am I visible? Okay. Uh, stop sharing. Okay, I have not stopped sharing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, now you are I've stopped sharing. Yes, sir, you are visible. Ah, you have to speak a little louder. Ah, wait, wait, maybe my volume is low. Ah. Okay, so I'm done. Uh, oh. So if there is any comment, you know, there really shouldn't be a question. If there's a comment, you can say something else about Bombay. That, uh... Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, there is a question from actually okay. YouTube. Oh. Hello? Yes, yes, I can yeah. see it. What if the water fills the car from the inside? Then you are yes. home. Then there's not much of a problem. Okay. Then you can, you can open it. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Anybody if else? Somebody uh, has another insight. I would. Like to... ah. you need not necessarily have a question. You can say add something, some value to this talk, if you want, okay. by adding uh, your own observation. Sir, you did not think about this. <laughs> or you didn't tell me. I no. thought about. I thought about Mm. Uh, Professor Actually, Vijay Singh, I want to say something. Ah, bolye, bolye. Ah. Uh, I thought you would tell us uh, <laughs> that why the camera did not show up in the Shree Smail scene in Mughal Azam. Uh, why did the camera not show up in the Shree Smail scene in Mughal Azam? Yeah, because that was a big tussle between the movie uh, photographer and the other people. That uh, How can he avoid... Uh, 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 camera, camera man showing up, camera showing up, then he does this in the mirror room. But uh, mm -hmm. it turned out uh, we, we couldn't spot camera or uh, anybody else. It was just the uh, actress. Uh, Madhubala. Uh, yeah. So That uh, is an interesting question. Uh, I haven't thought of it. To be honest with you, it's a very good question. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any answer? I mean, it's you have any or any plausible... Uh, no, I, 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 I don't know. You showed it, so I thought maybe uh, you would answer it. So I was just waiting for it. No. Uh, actually, at one point I thought of it, but I, I don't know the answer, to be honest. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Very good. Well. I'll think about it. So there's something to think. We, we, we read so many articles on this particular thing, but nobody ever talks about... Uh, 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 reason why uh, they could avoid difficulty, it. Difficulty, very important difficulty for the camera person. Okay. I mean, yes. That, yeah. Very good point. You know, I was also very intrigued by the fact that it's only Madhubala who shows up, you know, in all those uh, Belgian uh, mirrors, you know, Belgian glasses. So, there is, uh, sir, the Mumbai local are sometimes a little bit tilted while Arriving at the stage, is that because of very much crowd in it? Uh, I wouldn't think so. Usually when you go around a curve, when you go around a curve, there may be a small tilt. Okay. I don't think the crowd would uh, be the source of it, you know, because if it did, 
and a much higher crowd in the tribu just tilt over which is something you always worry about so no it's just the tracks are such you know i don't know if you have seen uh, i think it is someone called sakshi but just for your knowledge if you have time today you look at a youtube in which fine men are speaking fine men is speaking about how you negotiate a curve because the those two wheels are supposed to be essentially of fixed length no and then you have, when you have to negotiate a curve the distance between in that curve the distance increases so how do they manage this is a very interesting question there there, there is a tilt over there okay i can't go into the detail of it but if you click on feynman okay and train or something like that you'll see this actually uh, <laughs> everyone is fascinated by mahesh is asking is it possible that mm. madhuwala was seeing camera and camera was seeing madhuwala so camera was no. out of field of your itself <laughs> i don't know <laughs> I, no, I think no, i think your last slide has made a lot of impact it appears like that <laughs> Yes. Everybody wants to eat pani puri. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe the pani puri, you know, the one before that, or the aina mal, or madhu wala. No, uh, no actually, under under normal circumstances, we would go for a pani puri after this class. But uh, yes. with this corona situation, we are deprived of it. Okay. Ah, yeah, I know. We used to. I was. I'm now. Now that I've shown that scene, I want to have a pani puri myself. Okay. <laughs> there is, uh, sir. There is question from, uh, uh, or maybe it's a comment. Sushma uh, Mane, inf- she is saying informative, wonderful, etc. Uh, Shalina Kush, Shalini Kushwa, thank you, sir. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, there is one question from Vijay Chavan. Yes. The Kulaba Observatory was shifted to Ali Bag. Did the Kulaba Observatory stop running after that? no they still they still had their offices there in fact the director used to sit there uh-huh. okay in kolaba observatory the okay. instruments there were some elementary instruments in kolaba okay. but the main ones were in alibad okay okay then the kolaba observatory shifted i don't know if they still have that space to them but uh-huh. now it is shifted to iig indian institute of geomagnetism yeah, near yeah. panvel near panvel okay there is one more from youtube Uh, anurag mishra uh, msc student physics student uh-huh. from christ church college kanpur ji ji ha my question is to you that yes. can we understand anything in physics especially quantum mechanics simran verma every uh, uh, something is different uh, simran yes. verma is saying yeah it's a different question simran verma is separate everything yeah. and everyone in nature is governed by newton's laws but we still have whether unpredicted irregular yes. results in our practicals and probabilistic and prob- theory for a die lack of physics or technology that is a question from youtube so let me say about the first question yeah uh, how about see what you can i think the question should have been more like you have talked about mumbai and you have looked at it from classical physics viewpoint okay um, you have not looked at it is there any quantum mechanical effect that you can talk about by huh. simply looking around you know right oh yeah yeah if you look at what... mumbai when i talked about the horizon problem i talked about bernoulli principle these are all huh. classical effect yes. i mean basically classical effects are those that are easily seen you know so, you know if you are actually moving around like a common mumbai car these are the things that you would notice quantum effects are usually not very apparent okay yeah correct. so i'm sorry to disappoint you anurag mm-hmm. but yeah regarding sabran verma's question i think uh, it is well known that even in classical physics if you have a very large number of particles okay there is unpredictability because you cannot crank out newton's laws of motion for all these particles okay that's why you need statistical mechanics that's why you need probabilistic theory and weather is the extremely unpredicted uh, predictable thing because it's an enormously complicated many body effect classical many body effect not even quantum you can see i have a book here called quantum many body theory okay 
let me pull it uh, but uh, am i not moving somehow i am not moving no. can you see me moving or not oh wait a minute sir in my when you uh, see me no it's freezed but we can hear you sir uh, okay for yeah. some reason it is frozen i don't yeah, know now why. now you no. are moving now <laughs> Okay, I'm moving now. I'm glad I'm moving. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. talking, moving, I don't know. Uh, yeah. So basically, what happens is earlier there was only moving and there was no talking in the Arish Chandraji factory. Okay, yeah. but now I was talking but not moving. So yes, it's a many body effect. There is a question from Dr. Maushmi Mohanty. Mm. Nowadays, trans Z running with electrification, then how magnetic field Z vanished? No, so there is a magnetic field. It's very small. It's about ten to the minus four Gauss, okay, or ten to the minus three Gauss. Even if you get a very high surge and current, it'll be ten to the minus three Gauss. But it's certainly less than that. But there is no magnetic observatory close by. So let there be a magnetic field. In fact, you'll be very surprised. I don't know if Moshimi is from Bombay, but there is a station. Uh, near Grand Road between Grand Road and Bombay Central, where the trains actually shift, I mean, uh, into the yard, and there's a huge surge in current that, that could be recorded in Kolaba, even with their uh, more rudimentary equipment. In fact, they could say now the local train has arrived in uh, Grand Road or something. Mm -hmm. So that it doesn't bother them because their their real observations are in Alibag, where there is no disturbance. Okay, so it's not any problem. Yeah. There is and no... then the trams can they be brought back? Uh, actually, I wish they could. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I'll tell you something interesting about trams. It has no end point pollution, but you can argue that it'll have pollution in the beginning point, no? Somewhere in Agadpuri where you're generating this electricity or something. But the yeah. point is, thank you, Mausim. But the point is, in Melbourne, for example, they have brought trams back and they are bringing it back with solar power panels. So there is no beginning point pollution. There is no end point pollution. They run slow. They are gentle. They are good for small business. I think that answers one another question from Tushar Pandit also. He is asking: mm -hmm. Is it possible to start again the trams in Mumbai city, and what mm -hmm. modification needs to be implemented for the benefit of humanity? Well, it I is, think you know, yeah. Mumbai. Mm -hmm. Well, we this, have metro. Yeah, we have started metro now. Wow. Yes. So again, yes. metro won't have an endpoint pollution, but mm. but metros, of course, of course, metros are good because they have short stations, uh, stations in in about half a kilometer to a kilometer, so it is good for small business. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think uh, and, uh, we are done with the questions. There, there is one question. There is one Jee, question thanks. there by yeah. Simran Verma, which she has put. Why the point where sunrise or sunset changes every month? What is it? Why the Sunrise sunset. or sunset changes. Uh, the point where sunrise is or sunset changes every month. Okay, Mayesh, you can answer that. <laughs> or you should at least. Astronomy question, so my. <laughs> yes. Now, why don't you answer that? Yeah, I'm not being facetious. I think you would be better. Why does it happen? Sir, sir please answer. No, no, you are not. No, no, you are not. Because Earth's axis is tilted in one direction, and as it moves from one point to another point, I mean, over six months, uh, mm -hmm. you see the sun uh, effectively shifting above the equator or below the equator, and uh, mm -hmm. that, and because the sun rising sunset is happening because Earth rotating about its axis, so uh, you naturally see that during summer, sun shifts towards north, so it rises mm -hmm. north of east and sets north of west. And so in winter, it will be rising south of east and setting south of west because uh, it will be moving parallel to equator. And it's an apparent motion. Correct. So you have, I think you've answered it well. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I think uh, we are done with the questions now. Mm -hmm. and, yes. Uh, uh, the program is conducted on behalf of jointly on behalf of uh, Department of Physics R J College and uh, IAPT Mumbai Sub Regional Council. Uh, uh, 
i request iapt mumbai sub regional council president dr atul modi to uh, present a vote of thanks now atul sir uh, yes uh, uh, it's always very interesting to listen to professor vijay singh uh, very enriching experience as usual so sir uh, on behalf of all those people who have attended uh, uh, your session today uh, yes, hello uh, yes yeah. i am requested to start my video so so on behalf mm -hmm. of all those participants who have attended today um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, on behalf of uh, all the members of uh, mumbai sub regional council uh, uh, executive body uh, and on behalf of uh, uh, rj college uh, physics department uh, we thank you very much and uh, iapt also extends uh, thanks to uh, rj college for uh, co-hosting this program thank you very much sir thank you thank you thank you very much sir thanks a lot yeah yeah, yeah. Okay, we, so we, we, can, we can we end the session here yeah just uh, yeah when is the next session can you announce yeah when yeah i will uh, i i will that announce feedback uh, poll yeah so uh, participants are requested to actually uh, say the feedback uh, and uh, okay uh, hello uh, let me uh, just uh, announce here that iapt mumbai regional council and department of physics rj college has actually announced this series uh, twice a week and every tuesday and thursday we will be meeting you with a new enrichment lecture and uh, next lecture will be on tuesday we shall notify you we shall notify you through some uh, uh, whatsapp groups or the mails and then uh, regarding uh, what is going to be the session so till then i say bye bye to everyone and see you on tuesday coming tuesday that is on 16th this lecture is going to be uh, by uh, dr r ganesh from um, ahmedabad and we will come with the details uh, uh, as a form of a notice So, so every also, lecture, uh, I think we are going every, to put a new poster yes. and new ID. Yes, yes. So definitely, the participants will get this notification, uh, and I'll be watch out for that. So thank you, everyone, and I thank even my principal, Dr. Himanshu Dawda, and um, Dr. Usha Mukundan, our academic uh, uh, director of Hindi Vidya Prachar Samiti. They uh, were throughout uh, uh, attending the lecture. spend some their valuable time <laughs> during this time and uh, uh, thank you thank you everyone thank you everyone who has thank you madam thank you thanks namaste ah uh, uh, one minute uh, i should thank uh, devi prasad shetty uh, from the bottom of my heart i think uh, without him uh, this session would not have been there so thank you dp uh, <laughs> thank you thank you thank you thanks a lot yeah I will end the meeting now. Yes, yes, we will end the meeting. We will end.